This is Georgetown, a place of passion and hard work. To be a Hoya, it takes your all. Mind, heart, a pursuit for excellence. We seek out the best in one another and ourselves. Determined to learn. Determined to succeed. Determined to have an impact on and off the field. There goes old Georgetown, that spark that ignites us to set the world on fire. A calling to reach higher than you ever thought possible. Working as hard in the classroom as we do in the weight room. A community rooted in a 500-year-old Jesuit tradition. DC is our training ground. The world is our arena. Together, we are stronger. Together, we are unstoppable. We are Georgetown.
Every year we gather here in tradition, a tradition that brings our community all together to celebrate on the hilltop. This lawn means a lot. It is a place for gathering, study, relaxation, and fun. And today, it is for celebrating. Celebrating these graduates who have worked so hard to get here and cross the stage to receive their diplomas. We aim for Georgetown to be in top shape, to host all of the friends and families that come through our gates. We look forward to this moment all year. It's an exciting time. Having worked on 19 commencement ceremonies, it's always special, but this year is very special. My daughter Morgan is graduating, and I'm so very proud of her. This will be the first commencement in 19 years that I'll be attending as a proud parent. I want to congratulate Morgan, her classmates in the School of Nursing, and the entire class of 2023. I'll see you all here. Congratulations, just wanted to send some well wishes. There is nothing you can't accomplish. I am super, super proud of you. We're so proud of you, Kriya. Greetings from the Philippines. We wish we were there to celebrate with you. We're so proud of you. We're so proud of you. You make the world a better place, honey. We love you. Sabíamos que lo ibas a lograr, hijo. Estamos orgullosos de ti. Te queremos. Congratulations, sis. Congratulations to the Georgetown University Class of 2023. I can't wait to see what you have next for us. We can't wait to see the good you're going to do in this world. Your hard work and dedication have paid off. As one journey ends, another one begins. And your journey at Georgetown was defined by excellence, passion, and happiness. Congratulations, Maya and Class of 2023 from Wisconsin. You are the toughest I have ever seen. So congratulations on everything that you achieved. I just wanted to say congratulations and we are so proud of you. Congratulations, Paola Guerra, you did it. I'm so proud of you. Shukamida. Boya Saxa. We love you. We just wanted to let you know that I'm proud of you. Congrats, we're all so proud of you. It's only the beginning, keep going. So proud of you. Thank you, Georgetown. It all starts with a spark, a dream, 
a wish. It is through your determination and resilience that your dreams, your aspirations become a reality. Today is a celebration of this journey. The day you first discovered your passions. The instant you opened the door to your future. The challenges you overcame. The moment that you realized your hard work has gotten you here. Today, as you look around, remember a dedication to become the best version of who you were called to be. Our families, friends, and loved ones are all here to celebrate you. Your gifts, your talents, and your fullest selves. We are forever Hoyas, together as people for others. Our horizons stretch beyond DC and the hilltop, ready to make an impact on the world. Class of 2023, it is time. It is our time, Hoya Saxa.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Thank you. 
Good afternoon! <laughs> President DeJoya, faculty and leaders of Georgetown University, Savannah Guthrie. And most important, members of the graduating class and their family and friends. <laughs> Welcome to the 2023 Georgetown University Law Center, Center Commencement Ceremony. Today we honor the individuals who make up the historic 152nd graduating class of Georgetown University Law Center. Please stand for the national anthem performed by Law Capella and members of our graduating class. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the
Thank you very much. That was wonderful. I would now like to invite Michael Goldman, Jewish chaplain at the Law Center, and Imam Yaha, Yaya Hendi, Muslim chaplain, to deliver the invocation. This is the day that God has created. Let us sing and rejoice in it. Take just a moment to reflect on where you are, where all of you are, what you have done and attained. Take a breath and savor the moment. When you began at Georgetown Law, could you imagine this moment of completion and satisfaction, achievement and success? Were there, mo were there moments at Georgetown Law which surprised you? How did you get it done, all done? Where did your energy, words, thoughts, and intelligence come from? How were you able to stand and deliver in class, exams, and in clinics? Now you open a new chapter. You have cleared the hurdle impressively, and of course, the next one looms. You, you may only have, you may well have questions and doubts about your new role. Can you start at the bottom of the learning curve again? Well, whatever it was in you or around you that got you this far is still there. You can and will be surprised again by your superpower that gets you through. In short, you've got this. And if you pay attention, you'll realize you're not alone. You have help from within, from family, friends, and colleagues, and perhaps from another source that continues to accompany you. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, the Quran declares stand out firmly for justice. For it is in the pursuit of justice you find righteousness. Almighty loving God of justice and compassion, we call upon your holy name to bless Georgetown Law Center class of 2023 and to bless the nation of ours and all the nations of the world. God, make this season of graduation one that inspires us to turn fear to love, to break the swords of war, to put out the fires of hate, and to march together in the gardens of kindness and liberty. We ask that you inspire our graduating class of 2023, the leaders of the future, with the ability to love unconditionally, to serve passionately, to humble themselves before your glory prayerfully, and to become a voice of truth and justice vigorously. God, we ask for a new season of hope and optimism and a new generation committed to tranquility around the world and a new path of reconciliation between all nations and races. Reform our hearts so that we may become a true image of your divine mercy. God, renew our tongues so that we may speak the truth. Living God, repair our souls so that we may echo the voice of reason, wisdom, and sanity in our country and all over the world. Give us wisdom to realize that redemption will be realized when all people return out of their exile from each other. And the night will turn into day when we smile for others' happiness and justice. May that day come soon. May we see it soon in this our world, and let us all with a united voice say, Amen. Amen. Thank you.
Thank you, Imam Hendy and Michael Goldman. Our founder, Most Reverend John Carroll, first Archbishop of Baltimore and first Catholic Bishop in the United States, took possession of land on our hilltop in 1789, and we mark that as our founding date. Our first student, the future North Carolina Congressman, William Gaston, arrived in 1791, though our first bachelor's degrees were not awarded until 1817. It was in 1815 that with enrollments passing the 100 mark, the college's president, Father John Grassi of the Society of Jesus, asked then Congressman Gaston to present a petition for a federal charter, a document that still stands today and sanctions the academic business we do here. Georgetown's charter, the first federal charter in the history of the Republic, has the additional distinction of being signed by President James Madison. Now, if I can just go off script for a scholarly and nerdy point. <laughs> My script, in accordance with Georgetown tradition, goes on to say, James Madison is the father of the Constitution. Those of you familiar with my scholarship, <laughs> and I assume that is pretty much everyone here, know that in fact, the father of the Constitution was New York's gifted Governor Morris. I could have let this slide, <laughs> but at Georgetown Law, we learn to speak truth to power. <laughs> so I will slightly amend our traditional script to say, Georgetown's charter, the first federal charter in the history of the Republic, has the additional distinction of having been signed by President James Madison, who was not the father of the United States Constitution. <laughs> it is our custom to initiate academic ceremonies with a reading of that charter. To discharge that office, I am pleased to introduce Ms. Marie Matson, Secretary of the University. An act concerning the College of Georgetown in the District of Columbia. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that it shall and may be lawful for such persons as now are or from time to time may be the president and directors of the College of Georgetown within the District of Columbia to admit any of the students belonging to said college or other persons meriting academical honors to any degree in the faculties, arts, sciences, and liberal professions to which persons are usually admitted in other colleges and universities of the United States, and to issue in an appropriate form the diplomas or certificates which may be requisite to testify to the admission of such degree. Signed, Langdon Chivas, Speaker of the House of Representatives, John Guyard, President Pro Tempore of the Senate, approved March 1st, 1815, James Madison, President of the United States.
Thank you, Secretary Matson. And now, Professor Paul Butler will introduce our honorary degree recipient, Savannah Clark Guthrie. In the television world, Savannah Guthrie is now known as the co-anchor of NBC News Today Show. But she was once known in DC legal circles as the lawyer who turned down a prestigious clerkship from a federal judge to pursue a career in television. Today, Georgetown Law recognizes an exceptional journalist and attorney who has dedicated her career to helping her fellow Americans understand some of the most important events and people of our times. Over the course of her 30-year career, Savannah Clark Garthy has covered a myriad of high-profile stories and conducted interviews with major newsmakers, including every president since George W. Bush. Now, Guthrie rose to fame as a legal analyst, White House correspondent, and anchor for NBC News. Today, millions of viewers tune in to see her as the co-anchor of NBC News Today. She also serves as the NBC News chief legal correspondent. Guthrie practiced briefly as a criminal defense lawyer before combining her legal expertise with journalism to become one of the most trusted and admired names in news today. Guthrie graduated cum laude with a journalism degree from the University of Arizona in 1993 and moved to Butte, Montana, where she got her big break as an anchor on a local TV station. Unfortunately, it didn't last long. The station closed down just 10 days later. <laughs> but she quickly found work as a reporter and anchor in Columbia, Missouri, where she worked for the next two years with a focus on legal journalism that would earn her the Excellence in Legal Journalism Award from the Missouri Bar. She moved on to anchor and report the news for the NBC affiliate in Tucson, Arizona, before making a career decision that would change her trajectory. In 1999, Guthrie decided to enroll in law school at Georgetown. She continued freelance reporting for the local NBC affiliate, including coverage of the September 11th terrorist attacks at the Pentagon and the 2001 anthrax attacks. She received her JD, magna cum laude, from Georgetown in 2002 and received the highest score on the Arizona bar exam. She, 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 she joined the DC law firm Aiken, Gupp, Strauss, Hauer, and Feld, where she focused on white collar litigation. Though she enjoyed practicing law, Savannah realized she wanted to pursue her goal of becoming a network correspondent. She left the firm and also turned down the aforementioned clerkship. Uh, she joined Court TV covering high-profile trials around the country, as well as Congress and the Supreme Court. In 2007, she caught the eye of NBC News, which hired her as a correspondent in Washington and quickly assigned her to the White House. She was named as anchor of today, as well as chief legal correspondent in 2011. In 2012, she was elevated to co-host of Today. For more than a decade, she has anchored major ranking news events, including every election night, and interviewed countless newsmakers, from presidents and prime ministers to some of the most recognizable figures in the world. Her work has been recognized with the Edward R. Morrill Award, as well as multiple Emmys, including for her live interview of President Donald Trump weeks before the 2020 election. And during her tenure as co-host, today has won a Peabody and twice won Emmys for Outstanding Morning Show. 
The award of this honorary degree of laws, honoris causa, is a fitting recognition for the extraordinary contributions that Savannah Guthrie has made as a journalist and commentator on issues pertaining to contemporary law and justice. In recognition of her achievements, Georgetown University is privileged to bestow upon Savannah Clark Guthrie the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa. Congratulations. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States and by the Board of Directors of Georgetown University, I officially confer upon Savannah Clark Guthrie the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa. And it's now my privilege to introduce your commencement speaker, Savannah Guthrie. Wow, hi everybody. Good afternoon. What an incredible moment we are in right now for me to be here among you on this gorgeous spring day, on this jaw-droppingly beautiful campus that you have probably been to, what, once in three years? <laughs> thank you, Dean Trainer. Thank you, President DeJoya. Thank you, Paul, for that introduction. Thank you for the invitation to be here for the great privilege of receiving an honorary degree. It's kind of amazing. I mean, it still has that new degree smell. <laughs> and it's a lot cheaper than the one I got the first time I came here. <laughs> Thank you most of all I want to say to you graduates for the honor of speaking to you today. And let's cut right to the big applause line. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Congratulations. Guys, law school is over. It is over. It cannot hurt you anymore. I'm just kidding, of course. Some of my most treasured memories and dearest friends, several are sitting right here in the front row. Some of my deepest self-discoveries, profoundest challenges, and greatest successes happened because of the three years I spent here at Georgetown Law. I had not set foot here in 21 years. But if you happen to see my old self walking around today, I was hoping you'd tell her a few things. You'll recognize her. She's the one with the frizzy hair and the doe-like expression and the posture like Quasimodo from lugging that con law book around. Do you know the one I'm talking about? It must have weighed 75 pounds alone. Here, I brought it. Are you kidding me? That's one book. Do you guys even use books anymore? Yeah, okay, so you know. I came here in the fall of 1999, a kid from Arizona, but honestly, not really a kid. I was 27 years old. I felt like an old bat compared to everyone else, all those smarties fresh from the Ivy Leagues with their tabbed textbooks and their painstakingly highlighted briefs. I felt, and I was, massively out-credentialed and outgunned. I guess I was what you could call a late bloomer, at least as far as scholarly pursuits. I grew up in Tucson, Arizona, and frankly, barely attended high school, preferring to ditch class and smoke cigarettes at the local Carl's Jr. than learn about, like, American history or world literature. Do you want your degree back? No? Okay. <laughs> Now, things got a bit better when I went to college. I attended the University of Arizona. I treaded water for a bit, but I perked up halfway through when I discovered journalism. That lit a fire. I had found my passion. I worked in local television news, rising from market to bigger market with my reporter's notebook and helmet hair and red blazer. I was the anchor of the weekend news in my hometown with some upward mobility when I decided to blow it all up and go to law school. Lesson one. High school slackers can turn it around. Lesson two, don't play it safe. I could have stayed in my hometown and with hard work been the queen of local news. It would have been pleasant. 
it would have been a sweet schedule, good job, close to family, close to friends, home, comfortable. But, and I'm telling you this because you're about to head out into an incredible new phase of your life and you will have lots of choices, maybe more than you wish you had sometimes. Comfortable is not where the action is. Comfortable is not where you're gonna find out who you really are. I don't know, I can't know what your biggest dream is. I don't know where your deepest fulfillment will be found. But I know where it isn't. It isn't in your comfort zone. Georgetown was a brave new world for me, except without the brave. I didn't feel courageous. I felt freaked. On the first day of class, I felt like I had walked into a conversation that had already been going on for three months in Latin. The things all the other students seemed to know instinctively, the knowledge they just had. There I was, writing it down furiously in my notebook. Again, they probably didn't ditch 35 days of high school. It was deeply intimidating. I was pretty sure I'd made a massive mistake. Not only did I not understand, I was living a different existence. I went from having a decent career in my own apartment to moving in with three strangers in a group house, answering phones in the dean's office after school just to make a few bucks. I borrowed every dime it took to pay tuition and my rent and living expenses. I had no safety net. There was no fallback. You too are on the precipice of your own great new adventure, a new existence that may not look anything like the one you're familiar with. Maybe it's your first time out of school. Maybe it's your first time in a new city or country. Maybe it's your first real job ever. There's always a few, and you know who you are. <laughs> you will be out of your comfort zone, so expect discomfort, uncertainty. Expect frustration. Expect doubt. And expect surprise. Expect pride. Expect to meet someone familiar but new. You. There is no substitute for what you all are about to experience. You have the chance to take everything you've learned these last three years, every part of your being, not just what you know, but who you are, your personality, your character, and take it out for a test drive. Push yourself, stretch yourself, see what you can do. Put the pedal to the metal. At Georgetown, my fear and intimidation were like a turbo booster, forcing in me an intense focus, a digging deep within. This sounds so cringy, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. This is the place I found out I was every bit as smart as those around me. This was the place I found out all those better educated, better pedigreed people weren't any better than me, or at least they weren't gonna outwork me. I would have never known that had I stayed at home. Maybe law school was a big gamble for you, as it was for me. Or maybe it was your safety net. Maybe it was your way of avoiding the scarier path. Whatever the case, I'm telling you, anything interesting you want to do, anything meaningful you want to accomplish, it is waiting for you. It is possible for you. But it is on the other side of a big risk, on the other side of a big bet. No, not crypto. <laughs> a bet on yourself, real skin in the game. It might work out, it might not. But the riskier step will be not to try. After law school, I took the bar, and I went to work at a big corporate law firm. I know, real original, right? Stop me if you've seen that movie before. But in all seriousness, I was delighted to have that job. The work was interesting. The pay was good enough to start chipping away at my gargantuan debt. And I had secured a federal clerkship with a judge here in Washington, D.C. to start a year after graduation. I had eyes on the Justice Department after that. My legal career was set and secure. I knew my trajectory. It was all laid out. That's it. Happily ever after. I didn't play it safe. Good things happen. Story over. The end. No. <laughs> I went ahead and blew it all up again. About three months before I was set to report for duty for that federal judge while I was working at the law firm, a gnawing feeling began to grow to the point that I could not shove it down anymore. This path, as certain and assured as it was, was not my dream. Not truly. I got honest with myself. What I really wanted was to try to make it in journalism again. But not like local news before, I wanted to take my legal background and do bigger stories, deeper, on a national scale. I wanted to take it out for a test drive. But I had that clerkship waiting, the one that no one ever, ever, ever turns down. So I called the judge to break up. <laughs> I will never forget what he asked me. 
do you have a job? <laughs> no, I told him. Do you have any prospects, any leads? I shook my head. No. OK, he said, baffled at this lunatic in his office, probably wondering what he had ever seen in me in the first place. But he graciously tried to salvage it and counsel me. I understand what you're saying, he said, but why don't you just come work for me for a year? It will only enhance your opportunities, and then you can go chase your dreams. It was just me and him, sitting on his couch in his chambers. Awkward. <laughs> Moment of truth. I looked at him, and I said, I know that you're right and everything you say makes perfect sense. But I also know myself, and I know that if I don't do this right now, I will never have the guts again. He sighed, smiled, wished me luck, and walked me to the door. A great human. That was it. I walked out of the courthouse, stepped into the dazzling sunlight, and got run over by a car. <laughs> Just kidding, I didn't. But it wasn't easy. I wish I could tell you I sailed right into my dream job, that I never looked back, that I never second-guessed that decision. No, there were some wilderness months there. But eventually, I did land a job back in television, this time a legal cable channel where I could combine my television experience with my law degree, and I was on my way. OK, now the story's over. Happily ever after, more or less. Your story is just beginning, or at least a thrilling new chapter. What a surpassing joy it is to stand here with you and root for you, beckoning you into your great future. If you do see my old self walking around somewhere today, this was what I was thinking you could tell her. Don't worry so much. Don't sweat every tiny thing like it's the ultimate end-all, be-all thing. Except for the two-tenths of a percent I missed summa cum laude by, I am still mad about that. <laughs> tell her. It's good to have a plan, but it's also good to take it, rip it up, and do something wild and daring, even if it feels like you're taking everything you've worked so hard for and lighting it on fire. Tell her, it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> I wish I had known sometimes things in your life can be going amazingly, incredibly right, while other parts can be disastrously, catastrophically wrong all at the same time. Just keep going. Even your wrong decisions can be redeemed. It is never over. This choice or that choice is not the definitive end or the only possible beginning. Whatever you did, within reason, of course, and the law, you did not ruin your life or career. You might just be going a different way. You're going to get where you're meant to go one way or the other. You can't write yourself out of your own destiny. Thanks for that. Let me repay the favor to you, because in a way, I'm coming here from the future. I can tell you what you might want to tell your old selves in 20 years. I wish I could tell you that that school anxiety dream goes away, that decades later, you won't be having that one where you signed up for the seminar but then forgot and now you can't graduate, or the one where the professor calls on you and your teeth fall out, or he calls on you and you answer brilliantly but then you look down and you're not wearing any pants. <laughs> wish I could tell you that the bar exam is not in 60 days. I know, bummer. <laughs> what I can tell you is that we need you in the future. We need your rigor, the creativity of your intellect. We need your thoughtfulness and precision. We need your fairness. We need your sincerity. We need your passion. We need your heart for the outsider. We need your fire for justice. We need your stamina. We need your nimble minds, your ability to make the counter-argument, to set yourself inside a position you disagree with and argue it from the other side. We need your courage to self-interrogate, to ask yourself the hard questions. Am I being fair? What biases and preconceived notions am I bringing here? Am I being generous in my understanding of the other person? Am I listening? Am I listening in order to learn? These qualities are vanishingly rare. Maybe it's naive to think you're going to be doing this in some piece of complex commercial litigation at a big law firm, but it works for real life. And speaking of, take care of your heart and your spirit as well as you take care of your mind and your career. I don't know if you can believe in God, but believe in something, something greater and higher and beyond yourself. I truly believe we humans are built for hope and faith and deep purpose. I'm so proud of you graduates. I'm truly honored to be here. Because I was here once, I know exactly what it took for you to get to this moment. 
I'm looking at every single one of you and marveling, and I am cheering you on into your brave, wild, and wonderful future. Congratulations. That is one that. heavy case book. <laughs> Thank you, Savannah Guthrie. We at the Law Center have been very proud to watch you grow in your career and become one of America's most trusted and beloved journalists. Another round of applause for Savannah Guthrie. And it is now my privilege to introduce the president of our Student Bar Association, Maria Eugenia Gerian. Maria. Thank you for the introduction, Dean Trainer. And hello. I wish you all could see the view from up here, the sea of regalia and smiling grads, and of course, our guests wearing even bigger smiles. Welcome all. Welcome to our hardworking graduates of our class of 2023. And on behalf of the graduates, welcome to the family, partners, friends, and colleagues who supported us and are here today, as well as our esteemed faculty, administrators, and staff. Welcome. Class of 2023, we made it. The cold, <laughs> the cold calls are over. The final exams are finally done. And we can lay our 10-pound textbooks to rest, as Savannah kindly demonstrated. And if you rented your textbooks, here's your reminder to make sure you return them for the last time. <laughs> but we more than just made it. We thrived. Our JD class of 2023 had an experience like no other law school class has had in our history. Many of us, our first year, the year that is notoriously most difficult, was entirely virtual, or colloquially known as Zoom School of Law. It was uniquely challenging and isolating, but our shared experience brought us closer than ever. Despite being separated by computer screens, state lines, and even oceans, we built community and lifelong friendships. Despite starting law school during a year of unrest and unimaginable current events, we coped and still managed to learn contracts, civil procedure, and torts. And despite having to network over Zoom receptions and breakout rooms, we landed amazing internships, fellowships, jobs, and clerkships. Despite many of us having never stepped foot on campus our first year, we found our way together. And once we made it to campus, we were unstoppable. Among our class, we have students whose notes were published leaders who served on the boards of journals and student organizations, who won titles in advocacy competitions, and students who successfully represented clients in our amazing clinics. We are resilient. As is our LLM class of 2023. They represent over 65 countries, including Nicaragua, where my family is from. Woo! These students 
Many already attorneys, either in the US or their respective countries, brought a wealth of knowledge, a willingness to learn, and a smile to our campus. And despite the challenges of being away from home. So you are resilient. While our resiliency is a product of our own discipline and hard work, it is also thanks to our family and friends. So to those in the audience and who couldn't be here today, thank you for being our support systems. Whether that meant listening to us practice our oral arguments over and over and over and over again, or understanding when we missed gatherings because we were busy studying. We would not be here without you. Personally, I credit my success to the sacrifices of my parents, Maria Elena and Julio, and the, the un <laughs> I'm gonna go down the line a bit. Also, the unconditional support of my oldest sister, Maria Elena, and niece, Sofia, and the mentorship of my sister, Claudia, who is the first attorney in my family. And whew, I would not be here without you. All. I'm also thankful to the communities that I've been a part of at Georgetown Law. The Global Law Scholars, Barristers Council, and the Jessup team, my Latin American Law Students Association, Familia, Woo! RISE, the Appellate Courts Immersion Clinic, the Georgetown Law Journal, the Student Bar Association, and of course, Section 2, where it all began. Thank you all for making law school unforgettable. I'll now share one of my favorite quotes. Remember the past, plan for the future, but live for today. Remember the past. Without fail, I learned an unforgettable lesson from each of my classmates and the communities that I've been a part of. So I invite you all to reflect on the impact that your classmates have had on you and the impact that you've undoubtedly left on them. Remember what we've learned from each other and carry that with you. Plan for the future. As we embark on our legal career, stay true to the values of being a Georgetown Law graduate. At Georgetown, we often hear, law is but the means, justice is the end. So as you fight to uphold or change the laws, let justice be your compass. Regardless of whether your goal is to become partner, run for public office, start a nonprofit, become a correspondent, or simply live a fulfilling career, whatever you decide to do with your degree, your, our class will go on to change the world. And you have such a bright future ahead. But live for today. So much of law school consisted of planning ahead applying to jobs and clerkships years in advance, always worrying about what comes next. And what's next for us now is exciting. We're becoming attorneys across jurisdictions. But don't get lost in the future. Live in the now where there's so much to celebrate and be present every day. Class of 2023, graduating from Georgetown Law is no small achievement, and you did that. Congratulations, be proud. I'm proud, proud of all of your countless accomplishments, the lessons I've learned from you, and proud to graduate alongside you. And I'm also thankful. Thank you for allowing me to serve as the first, but certainly not last, Latina president of the Student Bar Association. It's been my honor. In class of 2023, I know I told you not to plan too far ahead, but I hope to see you all in five years in 2028 for our five-year reunion. But until then, I look forward to seeing all that you will accomplish. And as the graduating students may know, 
I began each weekly newsletter that I sent this past year with Hola Joyas. So it's only fitting that I end today with Adios Joyas y Gracias. What a fabulous talk. I'd like another round of applause for Maria Eugenia Gerian. And it is now my honor to begin presenting the candidates for degrees. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Juridical Science please stand? President DeJoya, as Dean of the Law Center, I have the honor to present to you Ferdes A. Wali, Sun Hong Yang, Jumana Kada Duor, Rafael Resnick, Andres Konstantin, and Ying Yi Shu. They have been duly examined and recommended by the faculty and approved by the Board of Directors. I therefore ask that you bestow upon them the degree in course. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States and by the Board of Directors of Georgetown University, I officially confer upon these candidates the degree requested. Congratulations. Congratulations. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Laws please stand? President DeJoya, as Dean of the Law Center, I have the honor to present to you the candidates for the degrees of Master of Laws, including Master of Laws in Advocacy. No cheers? <laughs> Environment and Energy Law. General Studies, Global Health Law and Governance, International Business and Economic Law, International Legal Studies, National and Global Health Law, National Security Law, Taxation, <laughs> Technology, Law, and Policy, <laughs> and Executive Masters of Law in Securities and Financial Regulation, <laughs> and Taxation, <laughs> and Masters of Studies in Law and Taxation. And finally, so I would like a big round of applause, Master of Law and Technology. <laughs> President DeJoya, they have been duly examined and recommended by the faculty 
and approved by the Board of Governors. I therefore ask that you bestow upon them the degrees in course. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States and by the Board of Directors of Georgetown University, I officially confer upon these candidates the degrees requested. Congratulations. Congratulations. And now, will the candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor please stand? <laughs> President DeJoya, as Dean of the Law Center, I have the honor to present to you candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor as as well as candidates for the joint degree of Juris Doctor and Master of Arts in Philosophy. Master of Arts in Security Studies. Master of Public Health, Master of Public Policy, and finally, Master of Science in Foreign Service. They have been duly examined and recommended by the faculty and approved by the Board of Directors, I therefore ask that you bestow upon them the degrees in course. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States and by the Board of Directors of Georgetown University, I officially confer upon these candidates the degrees requested. Congratulations. Well, what a special day. This day of celebration, each of you has earned your place among the graduates of Georgetown University. This is a day of gratitude. First, I wish to thank all of the families and loved ones, mentors and friends, colleagues and peers who have supported our graduates. We are honored to share this moment with all of you. I wish to offer my sincere appreciation to Dean Trainer and to our faculty and staff for all of their efforts to support and guide you to this milestone. These colleagues, many seated behind me, have demonstrated extraordinary care and commitment to teaching and mentorship, to research and scholarship, to supporting a vibrant and diverse community. To our faculty and staff, thank you for your many contributions every day that have made this day possible. Our ceremony is made that much more special with the reflections of our honorary degree recipient, Savannah Guthrie. Savannah, thank you. 
Thank, thank you for coming back and joining us for this commencement, for sharing your inspiration, perspective, and insights with our graduates. We're grateful to have you with us to mark this special occasion. Thank you. Maria Eugenia, thank you for your beautiful reflections. It's an honor to be able to celebrate this moment with you. And to the class of 2023, congratulations. This day of celebration, this day of gratitude, this day of, this day of gratitude, this is your day. So much has been asked of you over these past few years. You have forged community during the most difficult of circumstances. You have faced challenges none of us could have imagined only a few years ago. You've gained knowledge and experience, a deeper understanding of yourself and our world. Your hard work, your dedication, your commitment to service and to the common good, everything that you've done at Georgetown has brought you to this moment. There are two milestones that we mark this year, events that represent a deep resonance with the challenges that we will face in law and governance. 75 years ago, in 1948, the United Nations adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, affirming the inherent dignity of all people. This was an unprecedented global statement, an illumination of the shared values and commitments that unite us as a world and the responsibilities that we share for one another. And over these decades, our world has grown ever more interconnected, perhaps no better symbolized than in the invention of the internet in 1983, 40 years ago, when the first universal computer protocols were established. Now our world, our lives, we are all that much more deeply connected through our economies and transportation, through communication and technology, Ideas can have an immediate and worldwide reach, and so too the challenges that we face. This presents new, urgent, emerging challenges for all of us, for law, for governance, for how we organize our communities, how we organize our civic architecture, our systems that guide our shared lives together. To quote from Father Pedro Rupe, the leader of the Jesuits in the latter part of the 20th century, he once asked all of us, are we equal to the demands of justice in our world? Over your time here, we have begun to address these challenges together. You've been embraced by a faculty who are at the leading edge of knowledge, your experiences inside and outside the classroom with faculty and with one another, in your clinics, in your experiential learning projects, jobs and internships, all these have exposed you to the very best that we know and can anticipate about the challenges of our future. You go forth from this day prepared to make a difference in our world, to transform our world so that all of our people can flourish. When you arrived here, you embarked on a journey, one that now continues beyond this place and beyond this moment. And as you enter the next stages of your journeys, you do so not only with the knowledge that you have learned, but also with the values that have shaped your lives and the character that you have forged. All of you are prepared to bring your talents, your knowledge, your compassion, your imagination, out in service to our world. So as you depart on this day of celebration and accomplishment, we're so deeply grateful for all of the contributions that you have made to this community, and we look forward to the ways that your leadership and service will contribute to the common good of the broader communities in which you will participate. It's a privilege for us to be here with all of you to recognize to celebrate this important milestone in your lives and this beginning of the next steps on your journeys. Now with this commencement, you embark on another special time in your lives. This is your time. We are honored to share this moment with you.
to the class of 2023. Congratulations. Thank you, President DeJoya, for those inspiring comments. Graduates of the class of 2023, this is a great day. On behalf of the Georgetown Law Center faculty, administration, and staff, I want to say that it has been a great privilege to know you, to teach you, and to learn from you. You are graduates of many different programs, but you are one exceptional group, the Georgetown Law Class of 2023. Congratulations on this extraordinary achievement. Each class at Georgetown is unique. Your experience is shaped by your interactions with one another, both in and out of the classroom. However, and particularly with this class, your experience has also been shaped by world events that happened when you were together at Georgetown Law. This group has weathered both a global pandemic and one of the most politically divisive moments in our nation's history. My hope is that these experiences have not discouraged you, but rather motivated you to use your law degree to be tireless advocates for justice and for causes that make the world a better place. I hope you never lose the passion and the energy you have today. To our JD graduates, it has been a pleasure to watch you grow as legal thinkers and writers, as litigators and negotiators, and as citizens during your time at Georgetown Law. We have been, as a community, enriched by your energy, by your intelligence, and by your thoughtful engagements with questions of how law is shaped and what, we, what goals we as lawyers and citizens should pursue. I want to specifically recognize the graduates of our evening program. Graduates of our evening program, to balance your other commitments while going to law school in the evening is remarkable. And as each of you knows, a challenging undertaking. This extraordinary dedication will serve you well in your legal career. Our evening students. We applaud our SJD graduates. You have already made important contributions through your scholarship. And we know that in the years ahead, you will each make great contributions to the academy. Our SJD students. Finally, to our LLM program graduates. You came from 65 countries and 37 states to commit yourselves to a deeper exploration of the law here at Georgetown. Your global perspectives and insights your industry and academic achievements make us a truly global law school. 
I look forward to seeing you use your Georgetown education to contribute in so many fields and in so many nations across the world. And I want to go back because we never had a round of applause for our JD students, our JD graduates. Let us take a moment to recognize and thank the many parents, spouses, children, brothers and sisters, friends, parents, grandparents, those who are here today on the hilltop and those who are here in spirit. No one goes through law school alone. The people, family, friends, and loved ones who join us today made this day possible. They have listened and learned, uh, listened as you learned, and frequently tried out new words and phrases, such as the ones we heard Savannah Guthrie reference. Words like race ipsa locutor, <laughs> caveat emptor, and of course, Hoya Saxa. <laughs> they have supported you through your struggles cheered you on, sacrificed for you, and today they applaud your success. Now yesterday at our individual ceremonies, I asked you to stand and turn around and applaud family and friends. I'm going to ask you one more time, stand up, turn around, applaud family and friends who made this day possible. I would also like to take a moment to remember our dear friend and colleague, Simone Wong, who passed away suddenly this spring. Simone was registrar for Georgetown Law and provided support and guidance to countless students over the years. She played a significant role in this ceremony every year, and I know she would be so proud to see you here in caps and gowns. Finally, as we close, I'd like to just say how proud I am of each of you. As you've heard, this has been a time of great challenge. It would have been easy for you to give up, but none of you did. You were resilient, you supported each other, and we on the faculty and administration, we talk about that all the time, about how impressed we were. You flourished. You are extraordinary. We know, we know that great things lie ahead for you because we have already seen the greatness within you. Now you are embarking on your careers. I hope you will remember and honor the Law Center's motto, law is but the means, justice is the end. You are leaving Georgetown Law at a time when lawyers are at the very heart of decisions that will define the future of our country and our world. I urge you to carry on our deepest tradition and commit yourselves as you pursue your careers in the law to promoting justice and equality, to helping those who need your help. Now, more than ever, 
it is important for you to be what Georgetown educates all its graduates to be, Hoyas for others. Over the course of our school's history, our graduates have pursued many different paths. Their idealism, commitment, and ability to use the law skillfully and meaningfully have led them to make contributions to our society of the most fundamental importance. Today, at this moment, you become the inheritors of that great tradition. You become lawyers for others. We are so proud of you, and congratulations at this great moment for all of us. Congratulations. I would now like to invite Amy Ullman, our Director for Mission and Ministry at Georgetown Law to deliver the benediction. So now the moment has arrived with your degrees in hand to step beyond this place that has nourished your professional capacities and your sense of service you step into a world in need of help in so many ways. We have no illusions that this world is an easy place to put your law degree to good use. To riff off of an expression dear to Pope Francis, at every turn we find a field hospital. Your time at Georgetown Law has helped you to see that there are many ways to tend the wounded whether in direct service to those who suffer because of severe manifestations of injustice or through attention to how systems foster injustice. But in these last words, let us also name the challenge. It is difficult not to become overwhelmed in the face of such need and such pain. And as we face that down, we may also notice how very limited we are. In these moments, it can be a source of hope to realize that it is precisely from those limits that we can let the deepest goodness flow. We may draw on the mystical insights of tikkun olam, or from kintsugi, the Japanese fine art of repairing fractured ceramics with liquid gold. We may find inspiration in the creative love languages of Ted Lasso. My hope for each of you is that in the intense rhythms of your professional life, you may find time to recollect and treasure in your hearts how those spaces of vulnerability open out toward the deepest kinds of healing. And so this prayer of blessing. God of love, who pour out your care and compassion for a wounded humanity, bless this class of 2023 and bless the family and friends, teachers and guides who have modeled for them a spirit of loving concern. Bless their work in the service of justice. Lift their spirits when they encounter challenges and limits. Help them to see that it is precisely in these moments that they can discover the deepest resources for their work. Infuse in all of us a hopeful spirit so that we may not shrink from the work of healing that reflects your own concern. Help all of us to stay grateful for your gifts and for all of the love and support that surrounds us today. And we say amen.
That was inspiring. Thank you. Our ceremony now draws to a close. At this time, I ask all graduates and guests to please remain in your seats until the academic recession has left the lawn. Family, friends, members of the Georgetown University Law Center community, I present to you the extraordinary Georgetown University Law Center class of 2023. Thank you. 